uh, Jihad was, as I said, he was a very sort of uh, friendly person. Everybody knew Jihad. I don't think there's anybody in Guantanamo, like throughout the 10 years, who did not know uh, Jihad. Anybody who met him, they immediately like fall in love with him. He was such a, he's such a nice person, wonderful person. He's one of the best people I ever met in my life. That's really, like from beginning he gives that impression. He's very decent, he's very kind, he's very honest. He has all the best qualities that person can have. The impression I got from him was that he was a deep thinker and he thought through a lot of things, you know. Um, yeah, that, that, that's the way he came across it in terms of his character. Seeing Shaka always gave me a sense of hope. I was always happy when Shaka's around and people were always happy when he's around. So he's somebody who radiates joy and happiness. As I said, he's very lively and uh, those people, under the, these circumstances, you'll always remember. you remember the people who brought laughter to you. Also, you remember people who are in pain, and he was in a lot of pain a lot of the time. I think he was a strong kid, you know. By the time he got to Guantanamo, he... he even though he was a child, you know, 14 or 15 years of age, he matured a lot. And I think he could look after himself and speak for himself uh, with the guards or with his, with his inter interrogators. But I think, you know, being uh, much, older, much older than him, I did feel that sometimes I need to look out for him. And I think so did other prisoners around him feel the same. But obviously, being in, in Guantanamo, you can't really look out for one another. With Jihad, we spoke a lot about uh, ventures when we go out to the outside world. In fact, we almost formed a business venture there. We were going to open a restaurant. Uh, so he was, uh, he actually, over, he had a restaurant. It didn't quite work out for various reasons, but uh, we were sort of dividing the profits of that restaurant we were potentially going to, to open, which uh, I especially sort of uh, remember. And uh, we're talking about recipes. I have to say uh, food was a very, very big topic. It's, uh, any, anytime one is deprived of something, that something becomes very, very important. And food, we definitely were, we were deprived of. That's good food, uh, or even decent food. So it was a big topic of conversation um, with us, especially like when you're on hunger strike or anything like this, then food becomes a very, very big, big issue. Yeah, I think we all talked about eating a lot of food. <laughs> um, yeah, we should talk about, if, if we got released, you know, the first thing we would go, what, what would we eat first? Where would we go, you know, pizza or... McDonald's, uh, you know, um, chicken burgers and burgers and stuff like that. We talk about food mainly. Um, I think that's what, that's what we missed most because <laughs> we was obviously starved. When he is released, I think first thing that he'll ask to cook for him is going to be pilmeni. It's a Russian dish, the most famous Russian dish. Whenever I imagine him, I imagine him healthy. I know the news of his uh, ill health is, um, is, is always there in my mind. But I always like imagine him sort of uh, looking healthy, running around the restaurant and doing this. And, and I always imagine myself looking up to learn those secret recipes, <laughs> which I definitely would like to learn from him one day, I hope. Really, I hope one day um, he will be out and we can sort of um, do something together even if it's very small. Well, I think I'd like to laugh and make jokes with him and at him because that's still the person I remember. Um, I see Shaka often in my dreams, very often, uh, more often than I see any other person.
uh, and that's also through a sense of guilt that I don't I feel that nothing that I haven't done enough for him to return to be reunited with his family <coughs> but at the same time my thoughts and my memories of him are full of joy laughter and hope please don't give up and please believe that that day will come when you will be free and we all pray for you and we all remember you and we love you very much and we can't wait for that day when you will come back and we all believe that they, they will come and we all be together and we all will be happy and your son is waiting for you so please stay strong you try to work hard you try to do your best but it's so painful like you know working on things on uh, relating to Guantanamo is so painful that you do it for a day, you do it for two days, you do it for a while, and then you just want to run away from everything. And I seem to be doing that, like I work a bit, then it sort of consumes me so much that I, I just can't bear it anymore. And I sort of just stay, stay away from things for a while and go back. And I wish I could work hard. I wish I could do something that will uh, result in the release of jihad and the others. I wish I could. I wish I could help more. But I, I just want to say I'm sorry. I really don't know what to do. I'm very sorry. I don't know, you know, if he, if he's, if he could watch this video and, and see me here today. Um, all I could say is, is just be strong and, and just hang in there and, and you know, hopefully one day you'll be released. Um, but it's, 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 it's difficult, you know, you know today I'm here and I'll, I'm thinking of, thinking of him and he's still in prison and he's still, still a kid, you know, compared to me. Um, and I'll, you know, I've moved on with my life, I got out and I moved on and I've got kids, I'm enjoying life and he's, he's still sitting in, that, in, a, in a cell. I don't know really what I would say to him. It doesn't, it doesn't seem fair that he's still there and, and I'm here. In Arabic, they say, I love you, Allah. And I love you, Allah. Yeah, I'm going love someone, inshallah. I'm going to love someone. It's very hard to see your friend in that situation. It's um, still there after all these years. It's, uh, it's not easy. We cry a lot, you know. It's, uh, it washes the eye. 